Aloha class. I wanted to make a little podcast for you to help you understand scaling equations a little bit better and um, so that you can do your homework and all the other great things that you're going to do. So it sounds a little scary, but all scaling equations are, or scaling, is just the relationship of various parameters with body size. It's Body size is a tremendously important physiological parameter and it affects all kinds of physiological processes. Right now, today, we're gonna talk about metabolic rate. You can think of metabolic rate as just basically the cost of being alive. So a general relationship that we see is if you plot metabolic rate versus mass, you see that metabolic rate goes up. It tends to increase as animals get larger. Right? That makes sense. Bigger animals, it costs more to support larger animals. But the funny thing is if you correct for mass, which just means you take the metabolic rate and divide by mass, when you plot mass-specific metabolic rate versus mass, what you see is that relationship goes down. So what this means is that even though on an absolute scale, larger animals, it costs more to keep larger animals alive, right? Which makes sense. I mean, elephants eat more food than mice. <laughs> but if you look at the problem pound for pound, bigger animals have a lower mass specific metabolic rate. Isn't that cool? Okay, so I just wanted to show you this curve here. And so this is um, mass specific, the same curve, mass specific metabolic rate, but of course plotted with these really cute pictures of the elephant and the mouse. And this is um, Kleiber's mouse to elephant curve. And if you take a look at it, you'll notice something really, really interesting. Now, look at this, look at this line. Have you ever seen any sort of biological data in which the points fit the curve this well? Isn't this crazy? Look how tight these points are along this line. So that means that metabolic rate follows a very tight relationship with mass, or another way to put it is, it is possible to predict metabolic rate from the mass of an animal. Okay, here, this is um, basal metabolic rate, and this, this happens to be mass specific metabolic rate, which you can tell here because it's divided by the mass of the animal. Um, but anyway, the tight relationship would be true whether it's mass specific or whole animal metabolic rate. Metabolism, basal metabolism, scales very closely with mass. Now file that away for uh, later. <laughs> okay, let's get back to uh, the main event here. Why is um, the, so, so when you see a relationship that fits this tightly, uh, people often, or scientists often, try to take a phenomenological approach. They see a pattern, they fit a function to it that describes it pretty well, and then they try to think of reasons for why that is the function, <laughs> okay? But anyway, what they noticed here is that this follows a power law. Okay, and a power law is just simply an equation of the form y equals ax to the b power. And um, it makes these nice curves, but, uh, and so in the case of mass here, let's see, so whole animal metabolic rate.
we have metabolic rate equals A times mass to the B power, where A and B are constants. Okay, so in general, um, straight lines are easier to work with, and we can easily make this into a straight line by taking the log of each side. Okay, so if you recall from algebra, here's a little algebra refresher for you. You just take the log base 10 of both sides. Okay, and then you're like, oh, oh, I forgot how to do this, but not to worry. You will remember. We can refresh with the rules here. So as you recall from algebra, when you have um, the log of a product, it's just the sum, the, the log of a product becomes the sum of the logs, okay? And then the log of, an, of something raised to the power, you just bring it to the outside here and then it becomes the constant times the log of x. And then similarly, the log of a quotient where you have a power here above and then don't forget that when you have an x in the denominator, it's x raised to the one power. Okay, so you can first simplify this ratio um, and subtract the exponents. Okay, and then when you take the log again, it just comes out front here and you have b minus one times log of x. Okay, so if you remember these rules, then it's pretty straightforward. So let's go back here. So how do we simplify this? So the log base 10 of the metabolic rate just becomes the sum of the logs. So A log base 10 plus B to the mass. Oh, sorry. Oops. B to the log base 10 of mass. And what you notice here is that this is the y, this is the intercept, this is the slope, and this here is x. So this is a straight line with a y-intercept and a slope. So taking that information, if we have a relationship where metabolic, oops, if we have a relationship where metabolic rate is a power law of mass times some constant uh, raised to the 0 0.75 power then when we take the logs, um, we have the intercept and this becomes the slope. Okay, so uh, this, the log of A is the intercept on a log-log plot. So what that does is it turns the curve, curve this curve here into a plot of straight lines. So here we see the um, whole animal line here. So metabolic rate as a function of mass. And here we see the mass specific metabolic rate. And the difference is that the slope for the whole animal metabolic rate, if, if the slope is 0 0.75, then the mass specific metabolic rate is going to be zero, negative 0 0.25. Okay, and let's, let's, see, let's see why that is. 
Okay, so this is the whole animal metabolic rate. Let's compute what the mass specific metabolic rate is. Uh, so let's calculate. So if, if we have metabolic rate equals A times mass to the B, what is mass specific? Um, where B equals 0 0.75. Okay, so mass specific to turn that mass specific, all we're going to do is divide both sides by mass. So metabolic rate equals a mass to the b divide both sides by mass so if we simplify what does this become this is a mass to the b minus one power now we can simplify this because if b is 0 0.75 then this becomes a mass to the 0 0.75 minus 1. And that's going to simplify to a to the mass of minus 0 0.25. Aha! Uh -huh. Now this is um, metabolic rate over mass, so mass specific metabolic rate, but it's not the log transform version. So this is going to be a curve and not a straight line. If we want to recreate that straight line, all we have to do is take the log of both sides, log of mass specific metabolic rate is going to be the log of A minus 0 0.25 times the log base 10 of mass. And this here is the slope. So we get back this equation, or this, this line here. Okay, so we, we understand now that we can have a whole animal metabolic rate of 0 0.75, and then the mass specific metabolic rate becomes minus 0 0.25. And what does this mean? So this means that as animals get larger, it costs more to keep them alive. That makes a lot of sense, right? Elephants eat a lot more than mice. We know that. But pound for pound, Larger animals can live a lot more cheaply because bigger animals have lower mass-specific metabolic rate. Okay, and what I hope that you can get out of this is that you can actually learn a lot because um, basal metabolic rate is very conservative and is easily predictable from mass. And secondly, um, you can actually infer or easily tell um, a lot about different groups of animals by comparing the slopes and intercepts. Okay, so think about what this means for the animals that we study. And if you go to um, the readings here, you were asked to read that, that reading about um, metabolic rate, and you can see here in the, in the tables. So this is like just a tremendous table, table 4.5. And there's all of these um, slopes and intercepts. Um, 
So all of these equations here. Now it's really important that you understand very clearly what units these scaling equations are for. Okay, so this is 63.6 .6 is the A, the, the constant um, in front of the mass, and then mass go, is uh, raised to the 0 0.76 power. Okay, and for this equation, body mass here is in grams. So this is for mass in grams, and then the Y or the metabolic rate that you can predict from this is in joules per hour. Okay, so always, always, always know what units your values are in, and then you can actually do a lot, and you can plug in numbers and get predictions and do all kinds of really interesting things. But what you can notice here is that see the um the slopes are very very similar for most for most of these groups um you know around about 0.75 ish but what you see here is that the intercepts are really variable and some have much higher metabolic so that that's going to mean that they're going to have much higher metabolic rates than other groups okay so think about that um, when you start to go use these values for your projects, you're going to want to make sure that you are looking only at the interspecific metabolic rates, not the intraspecific. Okay, what you notice is that intraspecific metabolic rates have much lower slopes. So the relationships between individuals within a species is different than the relationships across species. So what you're doing is you're trying to predict a value for your species using the values of other species. So you want to stick to the interspecific, okay? Anyway, um, I hope that helped to clear a few things up for you, and I'll see you in class.